Well hello everybody, welcome to Jeff's Baking Blog. Today I'm making Cornish Saffron Buns. These are a traditional bun made in Cornwall and they're similar to some buns made in Scandinavia uh, in that they have saffron in them. Now saffron is a very expensive spice which has a, an earthy flavour, not a particularly spicy, it's not a spicy flavour, it has a, a, an earthy flavour, but what it does is it um, gives off a lovely yellow colour so the dough becomes um, nice and uh, yellow as it's mixed together. Now I don't recommend that people go out and buy saffron if they don't have it because as I say it's expensive. Um, it can be something like three pound for half a gram basically. But um, if, you, if you don't have saffron and you do want the yellow colour you can use a little bit of yellow food colouring in your dough or you could use uh, a little bit of turmeric which is another spice which has a different flavour profile so be careful that you don't use too much and you can also use safflower um, that will also colour uh, the dough yellow that again has a different flavour profile you can as well if you want to just leave these buns with no colouring at all, just the natural colour of the dough. But they're, they're very nice and uh, traditionally these were given to children um, at church from what I understand, uh, particularly Methodist churches, and they were also used as anniversary buns, known as Revel buns I think, Revel being an anniversary type celebration. So I'll go on to the ingredients and what I have here is 250 millilitres of whole milk, which is one cup plus two, two teaspoons. Now I'm actually using powdered whole milk, which I have reconstituted with water. That's 250 millilitres. I have 550 grams, which is three and two thirds cups, based on scooping packed flour into a 250 millilitre cup measure of strong white bread flour. You could use all-purpose flour, I think, plain flour. Strong white bread flour is better in the UK. It has higher protein than uh, plain flour. I have 50 grams, a quarter of a cup of caster sugar. Uh, I have 50 grams, three and a half tablespoons of uh, butter, unsalted. I have 100 grams, which is three quarters of a cup of currants. I've seen some people use raisins and others have even put uh, mixed peel in, which you might want to do if you wanted to use these as an Easter type bun. I have 90 grams of clotted cream, that's six tablespoons. Clotted cream is a very specific type of cream. It's cream which is cooked on a low heat for a very long time until it thickens like this. Um, and if you don't have clotted cream, you could use uh, double cream or heavy cream because we're actually going to melt this cream into hot milk. So it's not that we need that consistency of the cream. Then I have um, 0.4 of a gram, let's call that two good pinches of saffron, the little strands there. I have a teaspoon of uh, coarse sea salt so that would if you use table salt it would actually be less than a teaspoon because uh, these granules uh, fill the teaspoon quite easily. I have seven grams which is two and a quarter teaspoons or one sachet of instant yeast and optional I have um, a teaspoon of ground cinnamon that works out at about three grams. You don't have to use that and you could perhaps if you wanted to substitute uh, all spice or mixed spice, something like that, if you wanted to. So the first thing we have to do is to heat our butter, sorry, heat our milk until it's almost at scalding point. And then once it's heated, I'm going to put the saffron in and I'm going to stir it around and leave it to rest for 20 minutes so that the 
saffron infuses into the milk. So I heated my milk until it was just about scalding and I put my saffron in and as you can see it's very quickly turned the milk uh, much yellower and I'm going to leave that for 20 minutes and after 20 minutes I'll come back and we'll go on to the next step. So the milk has now uh, been left with the saffron in it for 20 minutes and I should say that if you're not using saffron if you're using yellow food uh, powder you can skip this waiting for 20 minutes um, and then what I'm going to do is to put my butter in and the uh, clotted cream and I'm going to return that to the heat but very very low heat I just want to warm it sufficiently that the butter and the cream melt um, and I want the liquid sort of lukewarm no more than uh, 42 degrees Fahrenheit which I think is about 110 sorry 42 degrees Celsius which is about 110 Fahrenheit so I'll just heat that up so that is now heated through and my temperature is actually 41 so that's good so what I'm going to do is just set that to one side for a moment and into the bowl of my stand mixer I'm going to place my flour, sugar the salt, the cinnamon and the yeast and I'm going to stir that around to get it combined just a little bit and then I'm going to pour my mixture of buttercream and milk in, scraping the pan so that any strands of saffron aren't left behind. And I'm just going to give that a bit of a mix around to get it combined and then I'm going to put it onto my stand mixer and knead it for about eight minutes probably until it becomes a nice dough which is sort of springy to the touch. So with my dough hook attached I'm going to knead that on a medium speed for about eight minutes. And since it's come together um, and it's about three minutes in I'm going to add my currants and I'm going to continue to knead it for the remainder of the eight minutes. So that has now been kneading for eight minutes 
and I'm going to lift it off the hook like that and I can see that it's quite springy to the touch so I'm going to transfer that into another bowl you can leave it in this bowl to proof but I'm going to transfer it to another bowl um, to proof so it looks quite good I'm just going to give it a bit of a knead like this and form it into a ball and where I have lost a current I'll put it back in and then I'm going to put that into my lightly greased bowl and I'm going to cover it with plastic wrap and once it's covered with plastic wrap I'm going to put it into a warm place for about an hour until it's doubled in size and once it's doubled in size I'll come back and we'll go on to the next step which is to divide it up and shape the buns. So it's been about an hour now and my dough has doubled in size so this is what it looks like and what I'm going to do is divide it into uh, about 10 pieces or oh, 10 pieces hopefully of reasonably even size and I estimate that they should work out at about 100 to 106 grams So I have my 10 pieces divided up equally. What I'm going to do is flatten them out and then pull them together like that, form them into a ball and just roll them in my hand. And go underneath and pinch the seam like that and place them onto a baking tray that is lined with some parchment paper so there are the ten uh, buns rolled out on the parchment paper and I'm going to cover those again with a damp towel and leave them for 30 minutes and while that 30 minutes is progressing I'm going to preheat my oven to 200 celsius that's 180 celsius with a fan 400 fahrenheit and then I will come back after 30 minutes show you what they look like and we'll put them in the oven and bake them so I have now let these rest again for 30 minutes and my oven is preheated so I'm going to put them into the oven and I'm going to bake them for 20 minutes and after 20 minutes I'll take them out and put them onto a wire rack and then what I'm going to do is dissolve a quarter of a cup 50 grams of sugar in a couple of tablespoons of uh, water and let it boil for a minute or so to form a syrup which I can brush on the top so I'll come back and show you these and brush the top uh, as soon as they're out of the oven so I baked the uh, Cornish saffron buns for 20 minutes and I've taken them out of the oven and they're still hot this is what they look like and what I have here is my 50 grams of sugar that I said I would boil in two tablespoons of water 30 milliliters of water I let that boil for a, about two minutes so it's a nice syrup and what I'm going to do is brush that on the top that's going to give it a slightly sticky top and it will make it glisten as well
and I've just put some uh, off cut of parchment paper underneath my rack to catch any drips of the syrup. So they're now brushed with the syrup and what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave those to cool down completely and once they've cooled down I'll come back and I'll have a taste of them uh, with some clotted cream and with some butter. So I'll be back once these are completely cool. So the saffron, Cornish saffron buns have now cooled down and I've toasted one which is how I like to eat them but I've also just uh, cut one and filled it with some clotted cream. So I'll have a taste of the toasted one. Mm. That saffron actually has a bit of a floral flavour to it. I can taste that coming through. I didn't expect I would taste it quite as much as that, but I can. Very, very good. And I think the cinnamon in it probably complements it as well. It just enhances that flavour. This is the sort of texture of a, um, a hot cross bun, if you know hot cross buns. So it's a similar texture to that. So I'll have a taste of it with the clotted cream, which I think is often how they're served in Cornwall. That cream is unsweetened. It works very, very well with the bun. So, as I mentioned, you don't need to use saffron if you don't have saffron. You can actually colour the buns with something else. But if you do have saffron, it is worth using because it gives a lovely flavour to it. So that's going to be it for this recipe. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please give me the thumbs up below the video and click to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In the top right hand corner of the screen there will be an eye that you can click on which will take you to a link for this recipe and I'll put a link for it below the video as well. And I'll be back with another recipe in the very near future. So until then, happy baking.